I mean, you have to admit, that's a pretty cool intro. Wait till you see the intro show up for the 11 Pro. You might want to wait till the end though. Okay, this is one of the phones in the Note 11 series. It's the Note 11. And in 2021 fashion, it is boxy. Looks like the Zero X with flat sides, but this time around rounded corners. It's so flat, it can stand on its own. I didn't do that though. And unsurprisingly, it feels solid in the hand. It's made of plastic, which doesn't scream premium, but it does come in this matte finish. Now I do like that it's matte, you know, matte over glossy all the time, but I did struggle shooting this video. Like reflections on this thing is just, I don't know. Like when the light hits it, it gives this shiny look. It's not as bad in real life, but in camera, it's just very hard to shoot. But I do think it's just this white color, but generally it's a minimal look. The power button, which doubles as a fingerprint reader, is on the right side and it's a lighter shade on this white collar and the buttons feel clicky, which is always nice. In general, I would say it's a good looking smartphone and doesn't show fingerprints. It has a 6.7 inch display, which is again smaller than the Note 11 Pro with an infinity U style notch. And even though it's not as modern as a hole punch, I don't really mind because it's a 1080p OLED display. So high resolution plus OLED, that's a really good combo. And yes, it comes with a regular 60 Hertz panel, but again, most consumers really wouldn't notice. Like I feel most people wouldn't notice 60 Hertz to 90 Hertz as much as 720p to 1080p OLED. So I do think they chose the right pair here. But let me know what you think. So yeah, I do think content viewing is wonderful because of that huge 1080p OLED panel and dual stereo speakers. So yes, this phone does have dual stereo speakers. The first is found at the bottom of the phone while the second is found just above the selfie camera. And if you do feel like plugging in, you know, your headphones that come in the box, yes, you can also do that because there's a headphone jack. In general, I think the display is very okay, like very okay. I mean, aside the U-shaped notch and perhaps the somewhat thick bezels, it's all right. I really do like the OLED display. It runs the Helio G88 processor, which should be okay for everyday tasks. The G88 features MediaTek's Hyper Engine 2.0, which is set to optimize the CPU, GPU, and memory for gaming. I'm not much of a gamer. I did play Asphalt 9 on the Infinix Note 10 when I did have it a couple months ago. So I can imagine that the Note 11 as well would have no problems. Now, of course, you wouldn't be able to play graphic intense games at full frame rate and highest graphic settings. So you're going to have to make a sacrifice, but I think that's okay. This phone comes with four or six gigabytes of RAM, which might seem small when compared to its elder brother, but it's not really especially if you go with the six gigabyte version. Multitasking is very decent. You can have multiple tabs open at the same time and would still be able to return to them without them restarting. For software, it has the XOS 8.0 skin on top Android 11, and that's different from the Pro's XOS 10.0 technically, but functionally, they're very similar. You still have the redesigned notification slash control center, you know, the swipe on the right for quick settings and left for notifications. You have the voice assistant, Ella, which kind of reminds me of Bixby, considering there is still a Google Assistant on the phone. App icons and sizes have been, you know, redesigned and it looks a lot cleaner. We have peak proof and all the others. The only question now is if Android 12 will be coming with the Note 11 and no word in that yet. But of course, as soon as I hear something, I would update you in the comments of this video. It comes with 128 gigabytes of storage and it is expandable with the micro SD card, which is located at the left side of the phone, which is nice. And if you flip the phone around, you can't miss the camera module on the back. It claims to be a triple camera setup, a 50 megapixel main sensor, two megapixel depth, and an AI camera. So really our main focus is on that main sensor. I did take some pictures on it and I want you to tell me what you think about the cameras on this phone. But yeah, with 50 megapixels, you should expect detailed shots. And I think pictures seem decent. And as far as videos go, you can shoot up to 2K. It has a 16 megapixel selfie camera and in well lit conditions, pictures appear okay. This is what the front facing camera 
the 60 megapixel sensor looks like seems pretty stable to me just you know decent so generally cameras are kind of you know the same story better but could be better and finally it has a 5000 milliamp hour battery so a big battery and it also supports 33 watts fast charging which would take you from zero to 100 in about an hour and a half. But really for me, all that matters is how long the battery lasts. And for most people, this is a one day phone. The G88 also boasts having battery advantages. So you can expect the Note 11 to try and utilize that. So for $108,600 or $195, this is what you get with the Note 11. A big phone, a very good display in my opinion, very big battery, okay cameras and an okay processor in this nicely shaped body. I do think if you're a fan of big screens, you love watching movies or playing games on your smartphone, then this Note is pretty, pretty good. But so is the Pro, you would think, right? Actually, alongside this video, uh, we're dropping the review of the Note 11 Pro as well. So you might want to click that video, watch it, Intro shot promises to be cool as well. And yeah, those are my thoughts on the Infinix Note 11. If you have any questions, definitely leave them in the comments. I would answer every single comment and I would see you when you see me. Oh yeah, don't, don't forget to click here.